In this video, I'll be sharing more of the footage taken from my most recent trip to Brown Mountain this past November 2019. But first, I wanna give a quick disclaimer. The clips you'll be seeing in this video do show lights, but I'm not certain that um, all of these clips are showing the anomalous light phenomenon that's happening up at Brown Mountain. All of the lights in the clips you're about to see were white, which is a little bit unusual from my previous experience. The other thing is that all of the lights in this video were somewhere below the tree line. These two factors combined are why I'm cautious to say that any of these particular clips show anything truly anomalous. In previous videos, I have shown footage of what I believe truly are the anomalous Brown Mountain Lights. I've put the links to all of my Brown Mountain Lights videos down in the description in chronological order, and I would definitely encourage you to take a look at those videos, especially if you've never heard of the Brown Mountain Lights. For reference, this is a daytime shot of Table Rock, which is part of the Brown Mountain area. I'll begin this video with a four minute clip of a string of lights meandering around Table Rock, then I'll be showing a few shorter clips of lights that showed up elsewhere around Brown Mountain. After that, I'll be ending the video with a few announcements, so let's begin. The really strange thing, this trip down here, is all of the lights that I've seen, except for one, have been white. Okay. That's unusual for the Brown Mountain lights. At least from my experience. I don't know if that has something to do with the weather. Um, have you ever come at this time of year before? Oh yeah, I, I always come at this time of year. It's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um. What? Wow! Look at that. Nice. Now do something exciting like. Move! <laughs> Hover around. Fly around. Come on. Apologies for the choppy audio. This was recorded with that camera that I was so excited about buying a few months ago. Unfortunately, it has a tendency to skip if I'm recording to tape. Anyway, I want to recognize the possibility that these lights are coming from a group of hikers. According to Greg and Dana Newkirk, there is a trail somewhere around Table Rock. Of my numerous trips to Brown Mountain over the years, I've only ever been on the Wiseman's view side of the valley. I actually didn't even know about the trail at Table Rock until fairly recently, but I'm eager to find it the next time I head up there, in part because it's so close to a light that I've nicknamed Old Faithful. I think I've mentioned Old Faithful in previous videos, but basically, there is a strange light that I keep seeing pop up in pretty much the exact same spot, just to the right of Table Rock, flickering and dancing around right above the tree line. Unfortunately, I didn't get any good shots of Old Faithful this time around, which really is frustrating, but you know, that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Here is a still shot of what I'm calling Old Faithful, taken by someone else that I found on Google Images. Back to this particular clip, I'd like to point out that it's not so unusual to observe a string or a group of lights show up when the Brown Mountain lights do show up. But again, these lights may very well be LED lights from a group of night hikers. I'd be interested to find out if these lights correlate to a trail, so I plan to reach out to the Newkirks as well as a few other researchers familiar with the area. One last thing about the Newkirks, I've been following their work off and on for a few years now, and if you're not familiar with them, I highly recommend subscribing to their YouTube channel, Planet Weird. They're doing a series called Hellier, which many of you have mentioned to me, and I gotta say, 
This is such an incredibly addictive series. I don't want to give away too much if you haven't seen it yet, but one of the sites they keep coming back to investigate is Brown Mountain. Hellier is an absolutely fascinating series, so definitely check out Planet Weird, and a link to their channel can be found in the description. So, here are a few more clips from my last trip. Ooh, ooh, did you see that? Yeah, it's a wall. Yeah, okay. All right, now I gotta walk back over here and see if I can zoom in on Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, don't go out. The next few clips were filmed at the Weissman's View lookout point on the first of our two nights there. The lighting conditions were absolutely terrible, and despite the fact that I was filming in night shot mode, uh, the footage isn't really... it's hard to tell what you're looking at, so admittedly this isn't the best footage. Um, from memory, I think that these lights were showing up somewhere in the valley. That's uh, that's interesting that we're seeing so many over there because oh, did you see that? I'm looking at it, dude. I'm... That's you know what uh. Ooh, wow. Yep. Yeah. Whoa! See that flash? The the reason I it, are you talking about the one off to the left? As many of you know, I have been working as a CNA for like the last almost ten years, I think, which is longer than I planned on. Um and I'm you know, working as a CNA is a grueling job. Sometimes the hours are grueling. Uh, sometimes I don't get enough hours. So it, the hours are kind of sink or swim and the pay is terrible. So I was recently talking to a home inspector about what he does and that really sparked my interest. So I started doing some research and um, basically I found out that I can be working a lot fewer hours while earning a lot more than I'm earning now. And all of this will allow me to focus more on what I'm doing here on YouTube. And that honestly is really my primary motivation for this career change. Doing this is really my passion. So. It's a 200 hour course. The first 120 hours are online. I just started doing that today. The last, uh, it's 120 online. The last 80 are in the field. Um, but here is the downside. It is not a cheap course to take. The grand total for the course is $3,000. Now I've put down the initial 500 but I am asking for some help paying the rest of the 2500 that I owe to be able to do this. So I decided to set up a GoFundMe page and I'll put the link to that down in the description. If you are able to help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want to support my channel, helping me get through this course is really the best way. I wouldn't be doing this GoFundMe if it weren't for the fact that I do need some help paying for this course. Anything that you can give would be greatly appreciated and would help me out tremendously. I posted this GoFundMe to Facebook and a friend of mine here in Greensboro, North Carolina, Caleb, 
has already donated $100 to help me out, and I just want to give a huge special thanks to Caleb. I was truly, truly humbled um, by that donation. That was so incredibly generous. So if you would like to help me out, again, any amount helps. And any amount would be greatly, greatly appreciated. The link to the GoFundMe is down in the description. Also, I am currently in the middle of moving. So the move on top of this course is keeping me incredibly busy. And the another frustrating thing is I might be looking at another move three months from now. So I'm going to be extremely busy for the next few months. I will upload as much as I possibly can, but I probably won't be uploading that much over the next few months. That said, I've been working on a collaboration with another YouTuber about a friendship case uh, coming from Chile. Most of the work fortunately is already done. I'm just waiting for him to get his parts to me. So that might be my next video and it would be feasible uh, to do because, well, the rest of the work won't take me that much time. Once things calm down, I do want to plan another trip up to Brown Mountain. Now, I've spoken with several of you who have expressed interest in going back up there with me. I know, uh, let's see, Byron Ballard, Sanskrit Blue, and another channel who I recently found thanks to Gonzalo Valdez. This channel is uh, Joey Adventures. I will keep everyone up to date with those plans and when that trip is going to take place, but it probably won't be any time real soon. It certainly won't be um, any time sooner than three months from now. I am so itching to go back there. Well, that's all I got for this video. I hope everyone is doing well. And, um, well, I'll see y'all later. Hey everyone, Drew here from Mad Cat Mysteries, and I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. If you did, you can click on the subscribe button below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.